Hi, Lincoln. It's Tammy from the clerk's office. I'm going to unmute your mic. Can we test your audio? Hi there. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Lincoln, what item are you here for today? I am here for item, oh, it's the Green Wind Sweeney item. Um, I'm trying to remember what, <laughs> what number it is on the agenda. Give me one second. That's okay. I believe that is 6.3, 7.3, and 11.1 on the agenda. That's right. That's right. Perfect. Are you here? Okay, gotcha. Okay, perfect. Thank Alrighty. you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. I know. Good evening, Councilor Fortini checking in. Thank you, Councilor Fortini. You're coming through loud and clear. Thank you. Hi, Lauren. It's Tammy from the clerk's office. Can we test your audio, please? I'm just going to unmute your mic. Can you hear us? Lauren? Mark, it's Tammy from the clerk's office. If you can hear me, you're not connected to the platform completely. Uh, my suggestion is going to be to exit the platform and try and reconnect. If I see that you're in the platform again and are having difficulty, I'll have our IT reach out to you to rectify the issue. Thanks, Tammy. It's Peter. We're going to get started now. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chair. It's now 7 o'clock. Uh, you do have, appear to have a quorum present. We'll confirm that during roll call. I'll turn the meeting over to you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, City Clerk. As we begin today's meeting, we would like to acknowledge that we are gathering here today on the treaty territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation and before them the traditional territory of the Haudenosaunee in Wendat. We also acknowledge that many First Nations, Métis, Inuit, and other global Indigenous people that now call Brampton their home. We are honored to live, work, and enjoy this land. Good evening. Welcome to our meeting of Brampton's Planning Development Committee. I will hand it over to the City Clerk uh, to call the roll for attendance at tonight's meeting. Members of committee, I will call your name. Please indicate your presence. Councillor Dillon. Present. Councillor Singh. Present. Councillor Fortini. Present. Councillor Bowman. Present. Councillor Pileshi. Is present in chambers. Councillor Willens. Present. Councillor Vasante. Present. Is present in chambers. Councillor Santos. Present. Is present in chambers. And Chair Medeiros is present. There are nine members present, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. Our next item is uh, approval of the agenda. Does any member wish to add a business item to tonight's meeting? Mr. Chair, just a few updates. Um, in regard to item uh, listed on the original agenda as 7.2, it was uh, listed in mistake. It actually is item 5.3, and it was rectified uh, earlier last week after the agenda was published. It's a statutory public notice item. And we did receive added correspondence that will be identified as under 11.1, uh, part 5, from Dave uh, Hannum, uh, Zelinka Priamo Limited, on behalf of the LCBO. And this is in regards to item 6.3, and 7.3 on tonight's agenda regarding the development proposal at 31 to 33 George Street and 18 to 28 Elizabeth Street North. Those are the updates, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. As I see, no one is on the chat box. Mr. Or... Chair, Councillor Plushy yes. is on the board. Okay, go ahead, Councillor Plushy. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, I'd like to add a discussion item that's in relation to parkland, parkland credits and stormwater management ponds. 
Okay. So as I see no further speakers, I do have a motion moved by Councillor Pileshi uh, to approve uh, the agenda with the additional uh, business with the additional changes as suggested by the city clerk and the additional item added by Councillor Pileshi. Is there anyone opposed? I see none, motion carries. Our next item is conflict of interest. Do any members have a conflict of interest they'd like to declare? I see none, so the uh, clerk will so note it. So our first item will be, or we go on to consent motion. So committee as part of our consent motion process, I will read out uh, each eligible item subject to the consent motion and the member may verbally identify the item to be held for debate during the meeting. So I'll start reading the relevant agenda items and members can identify any items to be held. Uh, first item 5.1 is a statutory public meeting. Item 5.2, statutory public meeting. Item 5.3, statutory public meeting. Item 7.1, staff report regarding proposed plan of subdivision Argo TFP Brampton, Ward 6. In consent, um, item 7.3, there's a delegation. Uh, item 10.1, staff report regarding unlimited height and density. In consent. And there, the next one, there is a delegation. So I'll hand it over to the city clerk to uh, read out the, the consent, uh, the, the items in consent uh, for a recorded vote. And I do have a motion moved by Councillor Fortini to approve the consent motion. That's through you, Mr. Chair. Just before we get to that, um, item 8.2 are the minutes from the Brampton Heritage Board of September 20th. I don't know if any member wishes to hold that item. And um, you did ask for 10.1, which is an updated staff report on unlimited height and density. So if uh, committee wishes to consider that report as part of the consent motion, the original staff report, which was deferred to this meeting 10.2, I would suggest that that can just be received. And item 10.3, which is corresponds from the region appeal regarding unlimited height and density can just be received as part of consent as well. Okay, thank you for pointing that out, uh, City Clerk. <clears throat> So through you, Mr. Chair, um, we will do a recorded vote on the items to be included on the consent motion. All members in favor or opposed, please indicate. Councillor Dillon. I in favor. Councillor Singh. Favor, yes. Councillor Fortini. In favor. Councillor Bowman. Yes. Councillor Pileshi. That's a yes. Councillor Willens. Yes. Councillor Visante? Yes. It's a yes. Councillor Santos? Yes. It's a yes. Councillor Chair Medeiros? Yes. That carries unanimously, nine to zero. Okay, thank you. We now go on to our statutory public meetings. Uh, this is a public meeting of the Planning Development Committee held in accordance with the requirements of the Planning Act of Ontario. The proposals to be heard at this public meeting are the result of applications made under the Planning Act. These are not proposals of the City of Brampton, unless they specifically identify the city-initiated proposals Tonight, we have one city initiated proposal for a statutory public meeting. The intent of this public meeting is to receive submissions from the public regarding these proposals. Given we may have persons watching this meeting through the city's live stream, we will have staff present each proposal subject to a statutory public meeting unless the committee decides otherwise. After receiving any pre-registered delegations, members of the committee may ask questions for clarification, but will not engage in debate on the proposal at this time. Uh, committee consideration of the proposal will occur at a future meeting when planning staff bring forward the final recommendation report on each proposal. The city also has posted to its website, uh, Brampton.ca, uh, supporting information documentation for these development applications for public review and reference. We will now proceed to consider the three items on this evening's statutory public meeting agenda. After consideration of these public meeting items, committee will deal with the balance of the agenda items on tonight's agenda. Our first uh, item is item 5.1. Uh, and that is an application to amend the zoning bylaw to permit two residential towers of 45 and 35 stories, Ward 1. And I believe uh, we have Stephen Dykstra, um, our planner from our uh, planning department. Uh, over to you, Stephen. Good evening. Um, I'm not sure if you can see me now. 
Okay, that's good. That's good. Thanks. Uh, good evening. My name is Stephen Dykstra, and I am the planner assigned to this application. The purpose of this meeting is to provide information to the public and seek feedback. Uh, this application was filed by Nahid Corporation on behalf of 2556830 Ontario Inc., uh, also uh, known as Harbrands Sindhu. Next slide, please. Okay. This shows the location of the property. Uh, it's located in Ward 1, and its municipal address is 226 Queen Street East. It's west of Kennedy Road, and it's on the northeast corner of Queen Street and June Avenue. Next slide. Here's the area context. <clears throat> the site has an approximate area of 0.7 hectares, which is 1.73 acres. A frontage of 94 meters along June Avenue and 69 meters along Queen Street. The site is currently developed with a six-story hotel called the Marigold Hotel and also has some motor vehicle rental associated with it. Along June Avenue, there's two single detached dwellings, which are also part of the proposal. The land is generally flat and there's some existing vegetation which is associated with the residential and the um with the hotel next slide please surrounding land uses are to the north we have single detached dwellings along charles street to the south we have queen street east and below that is a commercial plaza and the high density residential buildings to the east there's retail buildings and beyond is kennedy road and to the west, we have June Avenue, and beyond are some single detached dwellings and sort of a mix of retail and commercial buildings. Next slide. Here we have the proposal. It's for the development of uh, two towers. Tower A is 45 stories, some retail on the first floor, and some office on the second floor. It has approximately 545 dwelling units, um, which are essentially individual apartment units, and 352 parking spaces underground. Tower B, which is the one sort of a bit behind, is 35 stories, 395 dwelling units, which are apartment units, and it's got 320 underground parking spaces. It also, it also has a very uh, small uh, public-private park associated with it. Next slide, please. And here is a rendering of the uh, tower. And on the my right-hand side, it has the uh, site plan. So it sort of shows where the lay location of the buildings are. And it's got a um, what's called a wound roof, which is a sort of a traffic um, ability for cars and pedestrians and bicycles. And everyone started to use the same um, uh, access route. Next slide. Here we have the official plan designation. It's a uh, designated central area. No um, amendments are necessary. Next slide. Secondary plan designation. It's identified as central area mixed use. The proposal is consistent with the secondary plan. An amendment to the secondary plan is also not required. Next slide. This shows the zoning bylaw. Oh, the arrow doesn't go through all the way. Okay. Um, but it is zoned, currently zoned for, um, oh, what's the acronym for it? It's uh, CMUT, which stands for Queen Street Mixed Use Transition, which permits a range of office and commercial uses with a minimum, or sorry, a maximum building height of four stories. So obviously this one will need to have an amendment to that. And the two small um, uh, residential dwellings are identified as future development, which only permits the existing uses. So again, the applicant is proposing a zone that will accommodate their proposal. Next slide, which shows their proposed zoning bylaw amendment and some of the highlights. Um, so the uh, 
the, they're proposed is a uh, R4B, and it'll have a special number associated with it. It includes uh, zero uh, setbacks to Queen Street, June Street, and an interior side yard with a 7.5 meter rear lot line. Uh, it also has building setbacks of 1.5 meters to Queen Street East and to June Avenue, and also for a maximum building height of 45 stories and a floor space index, also known as FSI, for 10.7. Next slide. So the, the application is going to be reviewed to be, um, and, and to see if, if it's consistent with the, uh, the Planning Act, the PPS, the Provincial Policy Statement, the Growth Plan, Region of Peel, City of Brampton Official Plan, Queen Street Corridor, um, uh, secondary plan and the preliminary Queen Street East Precinct plan. Uh, it should also be noted that this is part of the MTSA, which is a major transit station area. Policy planning staff are developing policies to guide growth in these areas, and the MTSA specifies um, or is requiring to look for compact built form, mix of land uses that are walkable and transit supportive. And finally, uh, we'll be looking to ensure that it follows the principles of the Brampton 2040 vision. Next slide. Issues to be resolved, not really issues to be necessarily resolved, but issues that we're continuing to look at is the appropriateness of the density relative to the surrounding lands and um, the development potential of the surrounding lands relative to the proposed development of the subject site, um, specifically with the lands adjacent to the, the rear along Charles Street. Next slide. Here it shows what, where we've been and where we're going. The next steps, so the application was de deemed complete on August 8th, it was circulated um, and public notice was sent out on September 1st. Here we are at this public meeting and the next steps are for staff to continue to review the technical aspects and also to hear from the public and ensure that their voices are heard. Um, and in the future, a recommendation or a final report will be going to a um, plan development committee meeting. Staff will contact and follow up with all the residents who have spoken, written, or advised of an interest in monitoring of this proposal. Next slide. So the report associated with tonight's meeting will be available online. The presentation will be available online as well too. Final report will be posted on the city's website in advance of future meeting. Again, my name is Stephen Dykstra. My contact information is up there. And the uh, um, applicant's contact is also up there. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Thank you very much, City Clerk. Do we have any delegations? Through you, Mr. Chair, yes, we do. Uh, we have Richard Domes of GW, uh, Ganya Walker Domes, who is registered to delegate on this item. And we'll just bring his presentation up momentarily. Mr. Domes, you have five minutes to address committee once we bring your presentation up. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chair, members of the committee and those in the public. My name is Richard Domes. I'm a principal planner at Gannion Walker Domes LTD. We are the planning consultant for 2556830 Ontario Inc. We're the owners of the subject site who have submitted application to amend the city's zoning bylaw. Next slide, please. The subject site is located at the northwest corner of June Avenue and Queen Street East and is developed as the six-story Marigold Hotel as well as two single detached dwellings along June Avenue. The site features two separate parking lots located along Queen Street and to the rear of the hotel building. Next slide. Committee, the next few slides are street views of the subject site, which in our opinion depict that the existing development requires renewal to more appropriately address the adjacent streets, advance a more efficient use of land, provide transit-oriented development along a Zoom corridor and in in within an MTSA, increase pedestrian connectivity and interactions, and improve the overall livability and attractiveness of the community. Next slide, please. 
these two photos on the screen right now will primarily show the facade along June Avenue, which requires improvement through redevelopment given its exposure to the public realm. Next slide, please. The last two photos show the emerging built form character south of the subject site along the Queen Street uh, corridor in the form of the rhythm phase one and two development shown in the background. Overall, it is our opinion uh, that the existing site condition is not the best nor most efficient use of the lands, and the city of Brampton would be better served if a program for renewal and redevelopment where it was endorsed to take advantage of the subject site's geographic location and access to transit. Next slide, please. So much of the cities, uh, so much of the way cities are now planned and intended to grow is focused around transit. In this regard, the subject site is ideally located along the Queen Street BRT corridor and in close proximity to the Kennedy Road primary transit corridor where superior transit exists. Next slide, please. A broad range of land uses and built forms exist within the immediately surrounding context. Recent development activity within the surrounding area has contributed to the planned evolution of built form along the Queen Street corridor from the historically low density auto oriented development towards pedestrian friendly transit oriented mixed use development forms. Next slide, please. The subject site is also located within the city of Brampton Urban Growth Center and the regionally approved Queen 2 MTSA. Brampton's Urban Growth Center is required to achieve a minimum gross density of 200 residents and jobs per hectare by the year 2031. And the Queen 2 MTSA is planned to accommodate a minimum density target of 160 jobs and people per hectare. Next slide, please. We should be on the secondary plan. There you go. Within the Queen Street corridor secondary plan, the subject site and the entire area bounded by Church Street, Kennedy Road, Queen Street, and Beach Street are designated either residential high density or central area mixed use. And both of these designations contemplate higher intensity built forms. Next slide. In May 2018, Brampton City Council endorsed the Brampton 2040 vision. The subject site is located along the Queens Boulevard, which is actually Queen Street. The Queen Boulevard is planned to accommodate higher density mixed use buildings with a sequential street wall. Next slide, please. The development vision contemplates the redevelopment of the subject site as a mixed-use transit-oriented development that will optimize its strategic location along a mixed-use corridor that is supported by superior transit service. The site plan proposes a development of two tall buildings developed around a central Winnerf courtyard. Building A, located along Queen Street, is a 45-story mixed-use building with an eight-story uh, eight building podium. The 45-story the tower is, is sited close to the intersection of Queen Street in June and the eight-story building podium is, is provided to provide a strong street enclosure and a pedestrian-related street wall condition. The first two levels of the building podium and building A will incorporate commercial uses. Building B to the rear of building A is a 35-story residential building that is proposed uh, that is uh, designed to be complementary but reduced in size and scale to the 45-story building. A terraced building podium is, is advanced through building B that ranges between one and four stories in height that is advanced to provide a built form transition to the dwellings located along Church Street in the interim condition. Excuse me, Charles Street. Private indoor amenity areas are proposed through the towers that are complemented by rooftop amenity spaces on most roof levels. Additionally, a public park or publicly accessible parkette at street levels pro proposed along June Avenue at grade to provide additional outdoor recreation op opportunities and provide additional built form transition to the low rise residential uses until such time as those properties are redeveloped. Overall, 940 units are proposed with 32,000 square feet of commercial. Uh, next slide, please. And very quickly take committee through the floor plans. The next slide is the ground floor plan, which shows the commercial along Queen at the, in and at the intersection. The green, blue, and peach colors represent the various residential uses. And I'll note that the ground floor of Building A features a breezeway along Queen to provide a physical and a visual connection between the Queen Street corridor and the internal one earth. Next slide, please. The second floor plan, as shown on the screen, provides the red color in Building B, excuse me, Building A along Queen Street, which is an entirely commercial floor plate, and Building B has a combination of residential uses. Next slide, please. Next slide is the podium plan, the podium floor plans above the second floor, which feature exclusively residential units. Next slide, please. There we 
There we go. The typical tower floor plans are shown on this, uh, on this slide, which provides slender floor plates set above the building podiums. And these tower positions have been designed in an offset arrangement to maximize views. Next slide. And this slide shows the landscape plan, which features a Winterf courtyard with specialized paving, parquet along June Avenue, enhanced streetscape condition along Queen Street, and rooftop amenity at most rooftop levels. The next slide will show uh, renderings from Queen Street and June Avenue that depict a strong architectural character, a strong street relationship, and massing to reflect the site's location with the city central area and UGC. And finally, on the last slide, depicts the green initiatives that are formed the foundation of this development proposal. Um, a geothermal heating and cooling systems are proposed within this development in addition to um, photovoltaic solar cladding along the building exteriors. These features will make the proposed development one of, proposed development one of a kind within the city, and one, of, one of the most advanced within the GTHA from a sustainability perspective. And these sustainability features will be, be finalized through the SPA process. And committee, that is my presentation. I have to answer any questions, and I will note that the architect and the project manager are also in attendance if there's any questions of them. Thank you. Uh, city clerk, are there any further delegations? There are none that are pre-registered. I'm just going to look into the audience, those attending in person. Is there anybody that wishes to come forward to speak on this item? And Mr. Chair, nobody has indicated. Okay. Are there any questions from members of committee? Okay. I see none. So I do have a motion moved by Councilor Vicente. Um, and we'll take it as read. Is there anyone opposed? including the delegation by Mr. Richard Domes. I see none, motion carries. Uh, our next item, so City Clerk, the 5.2, is that the, the item was the one that you had, um, is it? That is a statutory public notice item at 5.2. Yeah, okay, so that's correct, okay. Yeah. So our next item is City Initiated uh, amendment to the official plan to facilitate updates to policies on pre-consultation application processes and determine completeness for planning applications. So I will hand it over to David Vandenberg, your manager from our planning uh, and economic development department. Welcome, David. Uh, thank you, Councillor Medeiros. As noted, my name is David Vandenberg, and good evening. I'm here to uh, present on a city-initiated OPA that proposes update the policies for pre-consultations and determine completeness of planning application. Um, no, this is a city-initiated OPA that will apply citywide. This amendment was triggered by Bill 109, but I think, which I'll describe a little bit more going forward, but I think it's important to note, it is also intended to contribute to a more effective streamlined development review process that produces good planning outcomes. On Bill 109, it was the first major legislative response to the recommendations of the Provincial Housing Affordability Task Force report and is intended to increase housing supply. It received royal assent back in April of this year um, and among many other matters, the bill amended the Planning Act to require municipalities to refund development application fees if a decision is not made within legislative timelines and it also requires complete applications for site plan control applications. Um, so for example, the timelines, the, the rezoning application would have to be approved within 90 days um, or a 50% refund would have to be given and there'd be gets graduated after that to, until a full refund is required. These changes come into effect for all applications submitted after January 1, 2023. Next slide. City staff brought forward a report to the May 25, 2022 Committee of Council meeting summarizing Bill 1 and 9, describing its implications for the city and outlining some preliminary actions being considered to respond to it. One of the identified potential actions in, identified there was to enhance the city's pre-consultation processes and to update complete application requirement. An official plan is, amendment is needed to implement these changes and that is, which is the subject of tonight's public meeting. I would note that this isn't the only part of the response that the city is working on and looking into as part of 
how to address the um, implications of Bill 109. There is a full range of other measures also being considered, and those would be, be staff is planning to bring forward a report on the Folsom response to Bill 109 later this year. Next slide, please. Now on to the proposed amendments. The city shares the province's goal to reduce, appro reduce approval times for development applications. To help do so, staff is proposing changes that would support early collaboration between applicants, staff, and other stakeholders to reach agreement on key facets of a development proposal. The focus will be on solving issues rather than identifying issues that, so that when the full application comes in, it can be processed quickly and, and with, within the timelines proposed. The specifics of the amendment include to add a requirement for an applicant to participate in a co-design process for development proposals that are significant because of scale, location, or other matters to the development of an area. Its purpose would be to advance the planning for a development proposal and try to achieve agreement on certain elements of the development, such as street network design, community infrastructure, park size, location, location land use, and key built form elements. So really the, the key elements that will guide that development proposal. The next change to the pre-consultation requirements being proposed is to allow the city to require community engagements before accepting a com complete application. Doing so will both improve the engagement with the public and help create a more efficient review process as issues will be identified earlier in the process. The final change noted is to add requirements for external commenting agencies to provide comments on matters relevant to their jurisdiction and currently only the region does. Um, so this would bring the other external agencies into that review process as well. Next slide, please. On the changes re related to the complete application requirements, the purpose of a complete application submission is to ensure that all the relevant and required information for development application is available at the time of submission. If a better and more complete application, applications are provided at the outset of the approval process, the, process the of processing of the application should become faster and more efficient. So the specific changes being proposed are prescribing complete application requirements for site plan and potentially including conform conformity to the zoning bylaw and meeting the minimum sustainability score requirements. And second, requiring all re that all reports satisfy approved terms of reference. And third, require that all plans and studies be signed off by a qualified registered and or licensed professional. And finally, require that external agency and internal departments confirm appropriateness on matters such as servicing capacity, access, the development limits from an ecological perspective, acceptance of archaeological assessments and school sites. Next slide, please. To address completed pre-consultation applications submitted prior to January 1 of 2023, staff is proposing a transition policy that allows the city to amend the pre-consultation requirements previously provided or to require a new application. Uh, next slide, please. This official plan amendment that the city is proposing will be reviewed for consistency with the provincial policy statement and conformity with the provincial growth plan and other relevant provincial policies and the regional and city official plans before the recommendation report is brought forward. Next slide, please. So as you can see on this slide, we are currently at the public meeting stage. Um, the next steps include further cons consultation, including with the development industry and other key stakeholders in our development review processes. Updates to the proposed policies may be made based on that continued review. Staff pl plan to bring forward a report or a series of related reports on this proposed OPA and the overall more fulsome response to Bill 109 later this year. Uh, staff will contact and follow up with anyone who has spoken, written, or in or advise of an interest in this proposal before that, before the recommendation report. And next slide. And this concludes my presentation. Uh, the report, as I note, this will be uh, is available online. 
um, and the presentation will be available online shortly. Um, again, my name is David Vandenberg. My contact information is posted on the screen, and we are happy to answer any questions that may come up. Thank you very much. Uh, City Clerk, do we have any delegations? Through you, Mr. Chair, there's no pre-registered delegations, no correspondence. I'm just going to look in the chambers. Is there anybody that wishes to speak on this item? And nobody has indicated, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you. Members of committee, uh, are there any questions? Okay, I see none. So I do have a motion uh, moved by uh, Councillor Dillon. Uh, motion uh, to approve the staff report recommendations, receive the correspondence. Is there anyone opposed? A motion carries. Our next item is application to amend the zoning bylaw draft plan subdivision KLM planning matters incorporated ward 10 uh, caliber homes and I will hand it over to Emma DeMello our planner from our uh, planning development uh, and economic development department welcome Emma. Uh, thank you good evening chairman Medeiros members of council city staff and members of the public my name is Emma DeMello, and I'm the planner assigned to process and review the application under City File OZS 2022-0034. The purpose of this statutory public meeting is to provide information to the public and seek feedback on the application filed by Alistair Shields with KLM Planning Partners, Inc. Next slide, please. Subject properties located in Ward 10 are lands located on the south side of Mayfield Road and west of Airport Road, and the properties municipally known as 0 and 5759 Mayfield Road. Slide, please. The slide shows an air photo of the site as related to Mayfield and Airport Road. The property is bordered by agricultural uses in Cal Caledon to the north. To the east, there are valley lands and lands designated for future employment uses. To the south, there are agricultural lands and future residential uses. And to the west, there are agricultural lands and valley lands and future residential uses. And the property is located on the south side of Mayfield Road, which is a minor arterial road with an existing three meter wide multi-use pathway running along it. The property is located west of Airport Road, which is a major regional arterial road. Next slide, please. And then the images here are a street view of the lands looking south from Mayfield Road. The lands are currently used for agricultural purposes and are planted with row crops. And then the images on the slide also show the existing multi-use pathway running east towards Airport Road and west towards Torbram Road. Next slide, please. The proposed zoning bylaw amendment and draft plan of subdivision application is to facilitate a development containing 127 single detached lots six townhouse blocks containing 48 units, a park block at the southeast corner of the plan, a walkway block, two road buffer blocks, a valley land buffer block along the eastern property line, and six public road rights of way. And the development proposal will require a zoning bylaw amendment and draft plan of subdivision application, as well as an additional site plan submission for the proposed townhouse blocks. The site would be accessed by way of two access points for Mayfield Road as shown by the blue arrows. And a zoning bylaw amendment and draft plan of subdivision application has been draft approved on the lands to the southwest of the subject property under city file OZS 2019-0013 owing to future low density residential uses to the southwest of the subject lands. The current zoning bylaw amendment and plan of subdivision application will have to be coordinated uh, with this plan with respect to the lot fabric and street layout. Next slide please. And then this map here is from the urban design brief submitted for the application with the subject property shown in the northeastern corner of the plan outlined in blue. The image provides some additional context for the proposal in relation to block plan 48-2. The majority of the proposed plan of subdivision consists of single detached lot typologies with six townhouse blocks located towards the interior of the property, which promotes a variety of housing types and gradual transition of built form. I'll also note that at the time of block plan approval, 
The owner of the subject lands was a non-participant, and therefore the easterly limits of future development were estimated along the valley edge. So through this development application, the limits of the valley land were staked with the TRCA and confirmed with a site walk to determine the true limits of the natural heritage system. So accordingly, a cul-de-sac has been incorporated into the plan along the easterly property line to address the revised development units, which will be shown on a future slide. Next slide, please. The lands are designated residential and open space on Schedule A, general land use designations in the official plan. The residential designation permits residential land uses and dwelling types ranging from single detached houses to high-rise apartments. So the proposal does align with the permitted uses in the residential designation. Therefore, an amendment to the official plan is not required. Next slide, please. The lands are designated low-density residential, which is shown in the peach color on the plan, and valley land, which is identified by the green color in the countryside village's secondary plan, Schedule 48A. The low-density designation supports single-detached, semi-detached, and townhouse structural types, and an amendment to the secondary plan is not required. Next slide, please. The lands are designated low slash medium density residential, valley land slash channel, 10 meter buffer, and park in the countryside villages block plan 48-2. As you can see in this image again, the limits of the development appear to encroach into the valley land along the eastern property line. However, this is supported by the staking of the TRCA and findings of the environmental implementation report. And as previously mentioned, a cul-de-sac was added in that area. The proposal aligns with the land use designations in the block plan, therefore an amendment to the block plan is not required. Next slide, please. The lands are zoned agricultural, which permits agricultural uses as well as some residential uses. An amendment to the zoning bylaw is not required, or is required, sorry, to permit the proposal. You can see in this map as well the lands that have been rezoned as part of the adjacent draft plan of subdivision under City File OZS 2019-0013, which align with the proposed designations in this application. Next slide, please. The applicant is proposing to amend the property from agricultural to four residential zones and a townhouse zone for the townhouse blocks. The R1F13-2367 zone is proposed, which is an existing special residential section approved in the abutting draft plan of subdivision application, which borders the southern and western property lines, and the R1F 9.0-2368 zone is proposed, which is also an existing special residential section in the abutting draft plan of subdivision. And then all three of the single detached res residential zones that are proposed all have minimum rear yard depths of 7.5 meters. An open space zone is proposed, for the park block located at the southeastern portion of the site. And the previously mentioned cul-de-sac shown along the eastern property line is more clearly visible on this plan as well. Next slide, please. The subject application will be reviewed for consistency with various planning tools, including the Planning Act, Provincial Policy Statement, the Growth Plan for the Greater Golden Horseshoe, the Region of Peel and City of Brampton Official Plan, Countryside Villages Secondary Plan and the Block Plan 48-2. Slide, please. Issues and opportunities identified to date include verification and, and improvement of the sustainability score, an appropriate management and protection of the Red Side Days contributing habitat, habitat within the valley, valley land to the east of the proposed development, um, ensuring that the plan incorporates the policies and housing typology requirements outlined in the Countryside Villages Secondary Plan, and a refinement of the park block to ensure the appropriate amount of park space is provided in accordance with the city's parkland dedication bylaw. Next slide, please. The application was filed with the city on July 12th and deemed to complete as of August 2nd, 2022 and it was then circulated to commenting departments and agencies. Public notice of the meeting was issued on 
August 26, 2022. The next steps in the application are that staff will continue the review of the application, including reviewing comments from the public and technical comments. Issues raised will be addressed in the recommendation report, and staff will advance a final recommendation report to council for a decision. And staff will contact and follow up with those residents who have spoken, written in, or advised of an interest in monitoring the proposal. Slide, please. The report associated with tonight's meeting is available online, and the presenta presentation will be available online shortly as well. Final recommendation report will be posted on the city's website in advance of the future meeting. And once again, my name is Emma DeMello, and my contact information is posted here, along with the contact information for the applicant, Mr. Alistair Shields of KLM and Partners, Inc. Please don't hesitate to reach out to myself, my manager, Steve Ganesh, or Alistair with KLM Planning, Inc. In addition to this, Lauren Dines, planner with KLM Planning, Partners, Inc., is present to answer questions should they arise. Next slide, please. Thank you, and have a good evening. Thank you very much. Uh, City Clerk, do we have any delegations? Through you, Mr. Chair, Lauren Dines uh, from KLM Planning Partners has requested to delegate. She does have a presentation. She is in the session remote, remotely, and we have no correspondence, and I'm just looking to see in the audience if there anybody that wishes to speak on this item, and there is not, so it's just Lauren's presentation. So, Lauren, when you're ready, we're just going to bring up your presentation momentarily. So, Lauren, you can proceed. You have up to five minutes. I believe the wrong presentation's on the screen. Oh, just a I'm not seeing yeah. my... Sorry. <laughs> Through you, Mr. Chair. I have a brief presentation prepared should councillors or members of the public wish to see it. Um, otherwise, I am available at this time to answer any questions. Okay, are there any questions by members of the committee? I see none. So I do have a motion uh, moved by Councillor uh, Singh to uh, receive the staff report recommendations. Uh, are there anyone opposed? Oh, in the added uh, delegation. I see none. Motion carries. Uh, our next item is. City Clerk, just in terms of my notes, the next item is 6.3. That's correct, Mr. Chair. Okay, uh, so we do have a staff report. Um, or th so we do have a delegation, so I'll hand it over to you, City Clerk. So through you, Mr. Chair, we do have um, a delegation from Dermot Sweeney, Sweeney and Company, and Lincoln Lowe, Malone Given Parsons, in regards to item 7.3 on tonight's agenda. And there is additional correspondence 11.1. And Dermot and Lincoln, you are in the session. We have your presentation on the screen. You have up to five minutes to address the committee. Please proceed when you're ready. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Dermot Sweeney. I'm the architecture firm Sweeney & Co. And also have invested in the project and are, have partnered with Greenwind to develop the project that you're looking at this evening. Really, we, we know that you're very familiar with the project and, and really what we wanted to do this evening was to thank everyone, all of staff for the hard work, all of the meetings we've had with counselors and, the, and all those involved in economic development. It's been a, a, a great pleasure to work with all of you and we're uh, in favor of the motion put before you to, to this evening and the bylaws have been worked on carefully so thank you all. And if there are any questions for myself or for Lincoln, who's our planner, that would be great. Perfect, thank you, Dermot. Yeah, I just wanted to echo uh, Dermot's thoughts. My name is Lincoln Lowe, principal with Malone Given Parsons. I'm the land use planner on this project and uh, you know, no, no need to add much more other than you know, I think this is a very exciting project and I think it's one that uh, Brampton could definitely be proud of. 
um, should it be approved. So again, we're here for any questions, uh, should you have any. Okay, members of the committee, are there any questions? Okay, so I do have a motion moved by Councillor Santos to receive uh, the report and accompanying delegations. Are there anyone opposed? You, Mr. Chair, just to clarify, it's to approve the report recommendations. Yeah, yeah. Re to receive the delegations and to approve the report recommendations. Is there anyone opposed? I see none. Motion carries. Our uh, next item, uh, staff presentation. Oh, I think that's in consent, 7.1. Uh, 7.2 has been dealt with, 7.3. Through you, Mr. Chair, the next Please. item would be 9.1. This is the added item from Councillor Pileshi. Thank you. All over to you, Councillor Pileshi. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and I'll be brief. I had a uh, discussion, a quick discussion with Michael Wan, so he understands where I'm kind of heading with this. And what I'd like to do is uh, going forward on all future applications, I would look, like to look at opportunities where we can start getting rid of our stormwater management ponds and see if we can um, substitute them with um, with some kind of tank system, filtration system. There are other, other municipalities that are looking at this right now. And if that means providing credits to uh, developers, I'm okay with that because that tells me that more parks are going to be delivered in um, in the areas specifically the ones that I represent. So on a go forward, I would like staff to bring back a report um, detailing how we can get this done. I realize that it's a very complicated matter. Uh, I'm not putting any type of timeline, 2023 kind of timeline, um, if that's okay. And uh, that was my direction to staff through you, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you very much. Are there any questions, comments from members of the committee? I see none, so I do have a motion moved by Councillor Pileshi. Is there anyone opposed? Motion carries. Um, our next item then, uh, correspondence, no. Correspondence we dealt with. Councillor question period. Are there any questions from members of committee? I see none. Public question period. Do we have any questions from members of the public? you, Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, I'm just going to check. Uh, there are none. Okay, thank you very much. Our next item is adjournment. So our committee is next scheduled to meet Monday, November 28th at 7 p.m. I do have a motion moved by Council Fortini to adjourn tonight's meeting. Is there anyone opposed? I see none. Motion carries. Everyone have a good night, and uh, I'll see you soon. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of committee. So this meeting is now adjourned in accordance with the special meeting of council that's been called for 30 minutes after adjournment of tonight's meeting. That meeting will commence at 8.20 tonight. And members have received a separate WebEx connection for that meeting. We're just going to wait for the live stream to end for this meeting.